This is the circuit diagram of amplitude modulator. So in order to construct a AM modulator, we need a high frequency transistor. Here we are using BF494 NPN transistor. Insert BF494 transistor in a breadboard. Now connect 47 kilo ohm resistor to the base of this transistor and its other end to VCC. A regulated 10 volt DC power supply is required to supply adequate VCC for this circuit. So connect the VCC and ground of our regulator DC power supply to the breadboard. 10 volt DC is needed for constructing the circuit. Now connect the second resistor, 10 kilo ohm resistor to the base of VA494 transistor and its other end to the ground terminal. Now the voltage divider bias of the circuit is completed and now connect the emitter resistor 470 ohm to the emitter and ground of the circuit. Now we have to make the LC tank circuit for that we need two 0.1 milli Henry inductors and a 0.01 microfarad capacitor. The two inductors should be connected in series and connect this uh, one end of the series combination to the VCC and its other end to the collector of BF494 transistor. Both inductors are in series. So 0.1 milli Henry inductors are needed to construct the LC tank circuit. And then connect 0 0.01 microfarad non-polar polyester capacitor across the series combination of two inductors. Thereby create the LC tank circuit. So this is a high frequency oscillator. We are making a, an oscillator which generates very high frequency sine wave. So LC tank circuit is needed to generate a very high frequency. We know that LC oscillators are very high frequency oscillators. So for an AM amplitude modulator, we need a very high frequency carrier. This circuit will generate the very high frequency sine wave. So the output frequency will be very high which is in a kilohertz range now connect the input coupling capacitor point, point 0.1 microfarad ceramic disc capacitor to the base of V494 transistor on the other end we will supply the input message signal then uh, we have to connect 10 kilo port and 0.1 microfarad capacitor. For that first we have to connect a jumper wire and at its end we will connect a 0 0.1, 0 0.1 ceramic disc capacitor. Now connect a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. It should be connected in the emitter terminal of this BF494 transistor. Then a 10 kilo ohm port should be connected in series with 0.1 microfarad capacitor and the other terminal of 10 kilo ohm port should be connected to the center of the series combination of 0.1 milli Henry inductors. And by adjusting the potentiometer we can adjust the amplitude of the generated high frequency sinusoidal carrier waveform. So the potentiometer is used to adjust the amplitude of the generated carrier waveform. Now the connections are almost completed. First we are not 
supplying the input message signal without the input message signal this uh, circuit will produce a high frequency carrier in order to observe the generated carrier signal connect the DSO probe 1 to the input sides input side that is the collector of BF494 and the ground of this circuit so we are taking the output from collector and we are feeding our input to the base so first without supplying the input message signal observe the carrier generator in the circuit this is sinusoidal waveform its frequency is around 110 kilohertz and by adjusting the potentiometer we can vary the generated waveforms amplitude so adjust to the 10 kilo ohm port in order to get a distortionless and decide amplitude level use cursor option and measure the peak to peak value and frequency so frequency is around 110 kilohertz and amplitude is around 8 volt now connect the input message signal so an amplitude modulator we need a input message signal should be uh, low frequency compared to the carrier waveform so we are translating the low frequency message signal into a very high frequency modulated signal so select a sine wave and its amplitude should be 1 volt peak to peak and 3 kilohertz in frequency now you can see on DSO NIM waveform M modulated wave is generated so adjust the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and make a desired amplitude modulated waveform adjust the potentiometer now you can see the amplitude modulated waveform the envelope will follow the input message signal and inside the envelope you can see the carrier sinusoidal waveform in order to calculate the modulation index we need to measure the maximum and minimum values of the envelope that is the envelope will follow the message signal and its maximum and minimum point should be noted in order to calculate the envelope calculate the in modulation index by adjusting the potentiometer and the amplitude of input message signal we can vary the modulation index with 100 percentage modulation over modulation and under modulation can be made so adjust the amplitude of input message signal and carrier signal by using potentiometer 